Oh. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Johnny. I'm Elliot. I'm Matt. I'm Greg. <laughs> <It's> like, um, <laughs> <fine>. <laughs> Where am I again? Uh, caught my pants now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, caught me with my cock out. And happy 30th anniversary to beloved Woo. Metroid franchise. We're celebrating with a playthrough of Metroid Prime, Woo. originally for the GameCube, but as you can see on the screen, we're playing Metroid Prime Trilogy because uh, I don't know. I feel like playing the Wii version of the game for some reason. Because why not? The well, Wii version is smaller. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a wee little lad. It's a wee little lass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, Matt. Metroid Prime Trilogy was the compilation released, I believe, in 2000 and... Uh, it's a couple of years ago. 2009. 2000 and a couple of years ago. Yeah, 2009, there you go. <laughs> oh, I'll just say 20,000X. Yeah, just 20, yeah, 20XX. It was at least 20XX. <laughs> Seven years ago. And uh, it was a compilation of Metroid Prime 1, 2, and 3, but it was, it was more than that because... That is not gave, the face of an intergalactic bounty hunter. It gave Metroid Prime and Metroid Prime 2, Metroid Prime 3's control configuration, so you can use the Wiimote and Nunchuck. <laughs> Feel about that however you will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and... Uh, it's not entirely a new thing. In, in actuality, the compilation is more of a re-release of the new play control style of Metroid games. Because Metroid Prime and Prime 2 were re-released with the new play feature, similar to what they did with Pikmin 1 and 2. Yeah. But I think those were, this is so ironic, Japan only. Mm. The, f the, 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 the country where Metroid performs the least. Uh, well, yeah, the they, they probably had the trilogy here you know, just to put it all together in yeah. Japan. They, in Japan, it probably was one and then two, and, and then, then they, they did said, okay, trilogy. You know Let's just make trilogy. Give it to the United States. Yeah, and that's hey, all. They up. like it. Now the oh. physical version of Prime Trilogy is discontinued at this point. Is that a flying uh, so toilet? It's a meteor. Flying this is, this is, this is well, the beginning of well, asteroids. Well, at, at least yeah. the Steelbook version is. This is there more than one version? No, no. The well, there was, there's the, the Steelbook version, and then there's the regular one. There's which a regular, is a regular case. Wii case. Yeah, there's a regular ah. case version, but they are. It's all gone. Did not know they, that. They don't make that. Then maybe didn't. the Steelbook version is the discontinued one. But I got that shit day one. Oh yeah. <laughs> when yeah. that came out, got mine. Got it signed by Jennifer Hale too, who was the voice of Samus in the Prime games. By that, Ooh. I mean she grunts. <laughs> uh, well, actually, uh, to, to go That's into all that, I need. what we're not hearing, and I think it's only in the PAL and Japanese release, there is opening narration for this scene right here. I, would, I was about yeah, to say, I'm, there I'm should have been. I'm wondering what the hell we're supposed to be looking at here. Yeah, yeah. never. Space, they, the final frontier. They cut They're going to blow shit the, up here. They cut it out for the North American version. And, but I still think you can data mine it, or you can find it on YouTube easily. Well, yeah. It's just an open narration saying that Samus Aaron's about to embark on another, you know, um, quest. I've, I've, uh, so we really didn't lose a whole lot. No, we didn't, we, we, no, we lost less than like 10 seconds of dialogue. I just need... <laughs> yeah. That's well, all I need. Well, that's I, what this theme is, right? Do you here. have the audio on it? I found the I found the collector's edition of it, which is the steelbook case one that you have oh, Catch it right on huh? on Amazon. My favorite shot of Samus and Prime series is right here. This is I just love this close up of the model. It's so and fucking gorgeous. desktop background. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, f I found the steelbook case edition for like fifty one dollars on Amazon. Fifty one dollars. Yeah. The steelbook. Okay, that's actually not bad at all. I think the regular one, though, is like close to 90. But if you have a Wii U, you can also get the digital download yes. for 20 bucks. Although, if, you, if you're a stickler for collecting, just get that. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metroid Prime. And yeah, you can definitely tell I'm playing the Wii version because Samus' gun is going all fucking over the place. Oh, I'm mm -hmm. a fucking dead man. <laughs> all right. Let me uh, just get a situation to the controls again because uh, with the uh, Wii controls on Metroid Prime, you have to point the reticle to the left or right to turn. Metroid Prime, again, is the first game to introduce these kind of controls, and I love them. And I think they work just fine for Metroid Prime. I have no opinion on that. I have never done anything like that. Yeah. You, never play, you haven't played Prime at all, have you? I have not. I have it right You have it, though. We ha yeah, me and Matt have it. We just haven't played it. Yeah. For shame. I mean, like, granted, like, you got yours at TMG, right? Yeah. How, like, how do you, like, how would you get yours? Like, how I much just was found it? it. Like, how much was it? 20. That's not bad. This is our gunship. This game takes place, Metroid Prime takes place between 1 and 2. It's your ship, stupid. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, it's, it's <laughs> important that we get into the habit of scanning that because that will become a log entry later down the road. Yeah, really? when you get yeah. to... When you get Press to the, the button, stupid. When, when, you <laughs> land on the, um, when you land on Talon 4 for the first time. I would love it. I'd just love to have a smart-ass, like, tattle or something from um, Majora's Mask being your um, voice scan gun. Voiced by no, Gilbert Gottfried. That, it's, it's no, funny. that would just kill me. That would that would make me reach for the mute button fast. It's funny for the first five minutes, and then when you realize you have to play the rest of the game and stuff <laughs> like that, it just drives you crazy. So in the game, you have you have a scan visor. Yes. Anything with an orange or red square, you can scan and get oh information. Oh god, pixel about. hunt. Uh, not really. No, it's not pixel hunt because you can clearly see the orange and red squares. No, I'm You're thinking like, of other M. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> Other M doesn't oh, give God. you that. Yeah. Other M doesn't give us a lot of things. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, 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 present like hall pass. Quality storyline. Yeah. We'll get to other remedies. Yeah, well, uh, preferably with a double barrel shotgun. Oh, we got our first well, important log entry here. Every time you see a new creature enters and downloads your logbook, that's something important for the logbook. And right now we got Parasite and it's still a vermin traveling in swarms. Bugs. Yeah, it, they're essentially furry. In addition to Talon 4, they're somehow in space. Roaches. <laughs> space roaches. You know, seeing this actually is actually getting me excited for us to get to Doom. Why is that? Because it looks like we're in Doom right now. Well, sci fi setting, first person shooter, it, it's, it's like you get the vibes. Oh, you get the, you get the feeling of isolation the entire Looks time. Looks alive. Huh. Well, for a while you felt like that company forgot about their game too. Hey, are you alive? <laughs> yeah, no, I think uh. he's not. You didn't answer me. <laughs> yeah, you probably ain't anymore. I fired him with a blast and he stopped moving. I guess he was. Uh, I guess he, he was dead. I, I thought he was napping. <laughs> Do you think that the change to first person perspective has enhanced Metroid storytelling? In what do you? Uh, in sense of um, you know how in three, you know how basically two dimensions, we essentially have what was a glorified platformer with a decent story to go with it, yes. emerging from its mechanics. Do you think Metroid One, Metroid Prime, going to first person adds anything like in terms oh, of yeah. horror or atmosphere? Especially <laughs> Prime, I think Prime One does it the best. It definitely helps with the immersion. Yeah, it, yeah. It, you get more immersed. I remember when this game was first coming out, and as a huge Metroid person, we were. I was just As like freaking out about out. I I'm not a, I'm not really okay with this. And then I played it. Then we actually played. I it. like I I gave it a shot. You know I'm always gonna give stuff a shot. And then when I played, I was just like, wow, this is. I'm more involved in everything that's going on, and it's working. And not to put down um, the, the other 2Ds? Prime games. No, not the two Ds, but Prime Two specifically, because I've gone on record saying that Prime Two's. Uh, environments kind of bore me the atmosphere is is foreboding and i can appreciate that in two or one i just think it's too fucking yeah. purple it's too purple <laughs> if, i'm of the mindset where if you're gonna really get a point across smack them in the head with it hard don't be subtle about it hit them hard with a jackhammer or in this case with, with your with your beam but like, scanning things is how you're pretty much going to build the lore of talon 4 or in pretty much any area there right? yeah because this game doesn't really have, you know, story elements or cutscenes. You read the story via the logbooks and stuff. Which and is a lot of stuff is unimportant. I mean, unimportant to the quests, but it's enough to get you an idea of what area you're in and what this to comes. It's also good for foreboding. It's like it's like playing. Reminds me of Dead Space. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It's like playing Dead Space and finding all the log entries. You're finding all the um, the digital diaries and shit. But there's a big trade-off, though. Here, the, here it's absolutely mandatory to really understand that, to understand the plot of what's going on in this game here. Dead Space, you get the feeling... It, Dead Space goes for that, but it also blends in the cosmic horror aspect. So with Dead Space, if, especially depending on how spooked the player got from it, it would end up becoming, yeah, this is maybe the back lore and all that, but ultimately, none of this matters to my character anymore. I want to survive. That's really where it goes for it, and I think that honestly worked in Dead Space's favor. Well, I like in this game that the the log entries that really matter you'll see in red. They instead of being orange, they'll be red, and they're usually the ones that go into your logbook. So it's easy to pick and choose the ones that quote unquote matter, yeah. as opposed to the ones that are just the uh, flavor text. And I like that. I like that you can you can get as immersed yeah. as you want, or you can do. It's like the bare minimum. It's like Symphonia like where you're call back right here. Is yeah, here we go. See that enemy. The hopper. The hopper from Parade. <laughs> it's also um, it's oh, also it, reminiscent of a. Uh, it's um, also uh, hopper. No, <laughs> hoppers were in Crade's area. Ridley had the purple ones. I forget what they were called, but they purple had, hoppers. Yeah, basically they were. Uh, they had like bodybuilder legs. So yeah, folks, as you can tell from just from the way I'm playing this, I'm very I'm very methodical on Metroid Prime for this playthrough. He's losing. It's 100 percent logbook. It's also 100 percent item completion. I mean, especially because you play this. Like, so I've played many this times. a lot of times, but I've also played it a lot of times on the GameCube, and there is a bit of a discrepancy between the both versions because yeah. again, motion controls are. I think the motion controls are fun for Prime, but they're not as you know they're not as accurate because you actually have to aim. Yeah, you know, in GameCube you had a lock on button, and you still have the lock on feature here. You can you can turn it off, but you just button. barely use it. Yeah, I barely. I, I get it. To, I use it to center myself. You yeah. can still move the reticle freely if you want. In advance, um, there are f like three different control configurations in Prime Trilogy. There is basic, the standard, and advanced. Right, I'm gonna take care of you real first. Can, yeah, can, can you play asshole. this with the GameCube controller? No, you cannot. Oh, 
Yeah, they don't even give you <laughs> the option. Which is kind of retarded. <laughs> Which is kind of silly when you think yeah, about it. they didn't even give you the option. No. Well, I mean, if they're going to release it on the Wii and they give you game, well, then what's the point? I mean, if they wanted to re-release the Because game. you may not have a working Wii non-truck. Uh, I certainly uh, don't anymore. God damn you, bro. Well, plus the Metroid 3 was only motion controls. Yeah. Well, so yeah. probably to keep some consistency, they just said, look, we'll just make it all motion controls and no choice. I would rather have them giving me the choice of motion or controller yeah. for all three games. Yeah. But then again, that means you would have to rework Metroid Prime 3. Which is fine. I'm okay with that. You're okay with it, or I think I should do it. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's not like they're taking their time doing anything well, else Metro, with Metroid. I don't think Metroid Prime 3 would be any worse if it had GameCube controls. Well, just that you'd have to actually program that into yeah, it, so it would take time. Not to mention all the damn puzzles with the grappling. The yeah, the, it, wasn't, it wasn't at the one that had the puzzles where yeah. you put the Wii remote and you yeah. turn it around Whoop. and stuff. Yeah, you'd have to... Twist that pedal. Yeah, which do you barely are, worked. Do you have the charge beam naturally? Yeah, the truck. Okay, let's talk about our beginning upgrades. <laughs> so, uh, at the beginning of the game, we have various suit, we have grapple beam, we have missiles, we have morph bomb, we have morph ball, and we have uh, yeah, we have, do have charge beam. Yeah, skin. So it's th great. So this is pra this is practically I'm gonna say this here. This is like playing Symphony of the Night. <laughs> it's exactly like that. Yeah. We're going to give you a lot of shit, and they're going to take a oh, break. Great. spoiler warning. Death is going to show up yeah. at some point. <laughs> <laughs> Do we get to fight Shaft? No. Ridley. We, we fight Shaft, and he's voiced by Michael Sarah. Yeah, it's Ridley. No. <laughs> no, we just travel through a lot of Shafts. <laughs> <laughs> and the, it, all the Shafts have Michael Sarah's face on it. I am the dark priest <laughs> that would be interesting. Ventilation Shaft. <laughs> oh, so is Samus actually Juno? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like, hey, Shad, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing okay. I'm doing just fine. Hey, I'm doing good. That's it. That's All good. right. Our first I'm boss that. battle. This is the Parasite. Hey, it's, the, it's that thing in Brawl. There's a cool little tidbit about this. Now, normally, you can shoot the Parasite Queen with missiles all from the get-go without having to worry about scanning it. But if you do scan it, you learn of its weak point in its mouth. Huh. And that's what we're going to do. Well, because we have to do it. It's 100%. Yeah, and of course. I'm going to try and get a dash print because I want that opening in the panel here. Get okay, out of the scan bar. Just thank you very much. <laughs> And then what you do is just you unload missiles on it. It is shooting Ecto Cooler. Now there's a trick that unfortunately I can't really take advantage of in the Wii version. Uh, rapid fire missiles where if you hit the charge beam button and the missile button repeatedly, alternatively, you do a lot of damage at once to the Parasite Queen. And the Parasite Queen doesn't like that. As you can see, I'm already out of missiles, so I have to rely on charge beam to finish the job. But it's fine. She's dead. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, that you're, you're Samus. You, know. you can take care of anything. I think the charge beam is about as strong as a missile. As a has. missile, yeah, it just yeah. takes longer to charge up. And yeah, but the charge beam uh, in this game is a thing they introduced in this game. And I'm glad they did. The charge beam can also be used to draw in pickups. Yeah. Because sometimes you could have killed those enemies high in the sky, and there's no way Samus can realistically get up there. So you can charge your beams to draw in those pickups for like, you. It's like playing Onimusha. Uh, yeah, it's like this. Yeah, it's, it's, like, it's exactly like the golf. You're right. And you already can't go one fucking space station without blowing the whole hey, thing up. No, this is our it's, job. It's like, Super Me it's like Super Metroid. Yeah, this is what we're paid for. Yeah, this is exactly a Super Metroid callback you know, in the space station. You start well, which is a Metroid 1 callback because you ran, you've ran away on a timer with that too. But in the beginning of the game. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. At what point does it stop being callback and stop being retreading old ground? This is just a question because I have no problem with it, but I'm just wondering at what point do you guys draw that line? Uh, it depends on... You know what, Matt? I think it depends on how long it's been since the next game. You know, because uh, oh, you're coming in pretty low. You coming all right? Yeah, I'm fine. You're not. You're coming in very low now. Am I coming in low? There How about go, now? There, yeah, there we go. Got, I gotta okay. keep it. I gotta yeah, put, put the mic oh in your mouth. Oh my god! The moment I told Elliot to fix his mic, I probably missed an important scan somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Elliot, I blame Here you. We go. Here we go. Here we go. Yeah, I'm gonna be a constant wreck in this playthrough, folks. Because if I miss something important, I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> no, you're not. You're gonna kill Elliot. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the one editing. Anyway, to answer we'll your still question. Kill you. So go back to your question, Pat. Uh, by the way, these uh, bugs I already scanned earlier. Just to yeah, they're yeah. the parasite yeah. from the very beginning. beginning. So you don't have to. You can scan them they're, here. They're, they just look like boogers. Yeah. Well, well uh, the visor effects are pretty cool in this game. We can talk about more of this later. But anyway, to go back to Matt's original point, uh, when can I tolerate a, uh, too many nostalgic callbacks? Again, I think it depends on just how long it's been since the last game. Because normally, if, say if it's been 10 years since you released one game uh, in the series and you got to release another one because why not? Let's give the audience what they want. You have to re-familiarize the audience with what they enjoy in the first place, yeah. even though they could still have the older titles in the backlog already. I think in that case, it's important. But if it's like a, a sequel released a year later or two years later, no, you have to do something original. 
because you just don't want to keep selling the same shit. Yeah, uh, it depends then, if you if you work it in right. If it feels like it's blatantly tacked on, yeah, then it's like oh come on, oh look, that, she killed the last boss and you got to run away again. But if you throw, you know, like this is early in the game, it makes sense. It works with the storyline, so it, it's it's effective. This is Metroid's first foray into 3D. Yeah, you considering to, a Metroid's keep, first foray. You have to keep audiences familiar with why they love the Metroid yeah. in the first place. Good it's, answer. it's no different than Super Mario 64. Uh, good answer. Then, well, all right, how like, about... I know I said, like, a family answer. feud host, but... You get but a gold star. <laughs> you do, you get a gold star <laughs> for that. That was kind of the answer I was looking for here on that one. What about, this, what about this case, then? I'm playing Castlevania 2, Lords of Sha Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2. And in the beginning... Are you missing a scan? No, and in the beginning, it's Dracula saying, like, what is a man, a miserable little pile of secrets the entire time. Then you fight the second boss, and then he, and then he just says, mankind ill needs a monster <laughs> such as you. It's just yeah. blatantly bringing yeah, up see, that's, in the night lines. That's yeah. just blatantly, yeah. it doesn't work with the storyline at all to do something like it, it's that. Like, it's like, hey, remember this game? Yeah. There's a nostalgic callback, and there's whoring. Yeah. Oh, no, it's matter really. Oh, my God, it's a space dragon. No. Time for PTSD. No, no really, come no. back. Uh, I don't have that channel on my subscription service. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Do you have the PTSD channel? <laughs> no, uh, I, I have hated BSC that and fucking and Hey, bit. hey, some call me Johnny here doing a PTSD unboxing video. <laughs> <laughs> I was worried about coming back and doing this. <laughs> I hated that fucking scene. We can talk more if about it when we get to other M. No, I want to save it now. <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. No, like, this, this is a good game. Let's savor the what? good game. Matt, let's, Matt, let's trade one bullshit for another one. Matt, bullshit. Save, save your this hate, right save, here. Save your hate fucking to when we get that game. This, <laughs> this is so stupid. <laughs> is I, this. So an explosion <laughs> catches us off guard, and we get rocked, and we lose our upgrades. Everything. I, I can appreciate that they try to explain why you start the game without all of your cool stuff. Yeah. But with everything that she's been through... Apparently, the secret to to defeating her is throwing her up against the wall. <laughs> yeah. I just took a fucking radiation with, with beam great for force. Apparently. With great force, by the way. You know what would really shock the shit out of Samus? All new upgrades. Room is depressing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Metroid Prime 2, I guess. All right, all right. Here's your um. Damn, I don't. I can't even think of a kind of power up to give Samus nowadays. Like what Something new, new? You can give her? Yeah. A new power up? Yeah. Hmm. Jetpack. Uh, Prime Two. Redundant. Yeah. Shit. It was underwater. It was underwater. The underwater check. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. What? What? You have flood? Uh. It <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. You know what? It's. Shit. That's remarkably like flood when you put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> the hover Elliot nozzle will specifically. Never, Elliot will never. I mean, now Johnny can never unsee that from Just Prime Two. Just give a flood. <laughs> Actually, why don't you give her where she's in her morph ball and is, she can fly around? I mean, sorry. You call it is. the space ball. Yeah. Are you ranked after everything you do? Uh, the prime trilogy version gives you tokens. They're pretty much achievements. Oh, okay. Uh, you you collect tokens in this game to all do uh, unlock uh, things like uh, extra stuff. Uh, because I one of the things that you uh, one of the things that we lose between the transition between Prime mm -hmm. GameCube and Prime Trilogy on the Wii is the Game Boy Advance connectivity. Yeah. Yeah. And that yeah. was how you originally unlocked the NES Metroid and the Fusion. And the Fusion suit. Yeah. Uh, Which was awesome. Yeah, it is awesome. And but in this game, you have to unlock it by getting enough. Uh, Play tokens. I could just imagine you're playing as NES Samus, and it's like it's like it's a tall NES model of her, and it's like with everything the, is with, pixel. With the, no, I will like the enormous head. Yeah, yeah. The, the juggernaut the helmet. Juggernaut helmet. Yeah. <laughs> the square butt. <laughs> the square butt. The square. Yeah. The square two pixel butt. Oh, you know what though? Hunter. And, and her green point, hair. I don't care what the art style is. Hell, you could probably get away with it, like the Federation Force art style. I would like an NES Zero Suit Samus. The green hair and the purple leaves. Yeah. Are, oh, yeah. Yeah. For the you armor. mean if that even counts as zero suit? That's that was. I was just telling you. Hey, I always took one. the zero suit as without the power suit. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is, but without the power suit. Is when you first discovered that Sam is real, really was a female. All right. Now I look at this environment and I weep because this is my harshest reminder that I'm not playing the GameCube version. <laughs> I can't do dash jump to get space jump early. So I got to play this legitimately, folks. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to scan our gunship because now it's a research entry. This yeah. Like, huh? hey, how long have you owned this gunship that you've never looked at it before? You ever get that, though? Like, you play a game like 10, 15 years and you learn something new about it? It's kind of like that. Exactly. Your ship's so fast, it could, it could go over 12 parsecs. <laughs> <laughs> There's your Star Wars reference. There's, 
There's a lot wrong yeah. with that comment. <laughs> We're going to talk later. So basically, okay. <laughs> scanning, red long, scanning red squares are how you got to find out about things. Your gunship, I mean, if you played Metro before, you know how the gunship works. You can save in it, and it restores your um, energy and ammo. Ammo specifically, that's really important. Yeah, and, and, and it doesn't actually do any fighting, so you're using the term gun very loosely. Yeah. <laughs> well, probably <laughs> three at least. It's basically that. just descriptive. Okay, did I scan this already? Yes, I yeah, did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. 